The objective of time series forecast is to uncover a pattern in the time series data and then predict the pattern to forecast the future. So it is basically based upon the past value or the past forecast. There are many time series forecast methods. There is naive forecast method where you simply use the value of the time series from the most recent period as the forecast for the current period. There is method of using average of all the historical data as the forecast for the next period. In this video, I will demonstrate more sophisticated methods for time series forecast in Excel. So we have a data set of 12 weeks of gasoline sales. And now we're going to try two different methods. The first one is the moving average smoothing. And the second one is the exponential smoothing. So the moving average method uses an average of the most recent data values in the time series to forecast for the next period. So in here, we're going to develop a three weeks moving average for the original 12 weeks of gasoline sales. So under data, click on data analysis, moving average, click OK. In the input range, we want to put in the sales data and we have labels in the first row. For the interval, we want to put in three because we want to use the three week sales to predict the next weeks. The output range, let's just put it in here for the predicted values and we check the chart output. Click OK. So we can see that we have the data for week four, which is based upon week one, two, and three. Take the average of them. And the next for week five, it's the average of week two, three, and four, and so on. So this is using the moving average method. And we can see that this line chart, the blue line shows the actual values. The red line shows the forecast values. Uh, interestingly, you notice that the forecast values actually starts from week three, but it's actually week four's data, which is 19. If you use the Excel line chart, you will see that the data actually starts from week four. So insert the line chart. Here you can see the predicted data starts at week four. Next, we're going to see some metrics for the performance measure. So the first one obviously is the error. So the error is the difference between the actual and the predicted value. For week four, the actual sales is 23 and the predicted is 19. So that's the difference. So we copy the formula. We can see that the error for week four is a positive four because the actual sales is 23 greater than the um, predicted 19. So this means that our model underestimated or under predicted. And some other weeks, such as week five, we get a negative error. So that means our model overestimated because our predicted value is more than the actual value. Overall, we hope to see that um, the negatives and positives errors offset each other. So uh, in the end, hopefully we still get around the mean of zero. And we can output a average in here. And this is zero, which is what we want to see. So another metrics we can take a look at is squared error. So squared error is simply the square of the error. So we can copy the formula down. And also we can have the average. The next one, we can take a look at the percentage of the error versus the original data. So um, this equals to the error divided by the original value. And we have 17%. Copy the formula down. And next, we can have a basically absolute percentage error. It's basically the absolute value. We use the um, Excel function of ABS of the percentage error. Let me copy it down. So basically, it's the positive value of uh, percentage errors. And we can also calculate the average of it. 
This is the ME, mean error. This is the mean square error, MSE. This one is the mean PE, mean percentage error. This one is the mean absolute PE. And so what do all these um, metrics mean? So first of all, MSE is a very common uh, measurement for regression model. MSE is the average of the sum of the square difference between the actual and predicted values. So it measures how closely the fitted line is to the data points. So we want to find a model that produces the smallest MSE. And in other words, we want these two lines to have the smallest difference possible. A model with the smallest MSE will have the best predictions. MAE stands for means absolute error, also referred to as the MAD, mean absolute deviation. So basically you would uh, take an absolute value of the errors and then take the average of it. So it's the average of the errors or difference between actual and predictive values. The use of absolute value in the MAE is to avoid the problem of positive and negative forecast errors offsetting each other. That is when you want to uh, know the actual amount of the errors that you get. So then you use the uh, mean absolute error. So it would then offset each other and you get about zero. So um, the size of the MAE or MSE depends on the scale of data, as you can see. So as a result, it's uh, difficult to make comparisons for different time intervals, such as comparing a method of forecasting monthly gasoline sales to a method of forecasting weekly sales or to make comparisons across different time series, such as monthly sales of gasoline and monthly sales of oil filters. So to make comparisons such as this, we need to work with relative or percentage error measure. We can use the MAPE, mean absolute percentage error, for that purpose. So now the second method we're going to use is the exponential smoothing. So again, exponential smoothing, different from the moving average, is that it uses a weighted average of the past time series as the forecast. In other words, the older the data, the less priority or the weight of the data is given. So new data will be more relevant and will be assigned more weight. And here we are using a smoothing parameter. We call it smoothing constant. Usually it's denoted by alpha and we use it to determine the weights for the observations. We usually use exponential smoothing to make short-term forecasts. If we use it for a long-term forecast, it can be kind of unreliable. But here we have such a small data set, it wouldn't hurt to use the exponential smoothing. And I expect this results to be even better than the moving average. So we're going to use exponential smoothing here. Under data, click analysis, select exponential smoothing. For the input range, you want to put in cells. And the damping factor is 1 minus alpha. So if uh, by default we use the alpha 0.2, that is 1 minus 0.2, that's 0.8 here. And we have uh, labels in the first row, so have that checked. And then for the output range, uh, let's just put it in here. And we want to output the chart as well so that we can compare. Click OK. So we can see here that our line of prediction has become more smoother than the moving average. So the moving average prediction has more highs and lows, more extreme terms, and then uh, our exponential smoothing method output more smooth uh, results. We can also see that the exponential smoothing is uh, using the previous data and the previous prediction. So in this case, I don't have a previous prediction in for the week one. So it's just 17. And then for the next one, you can see that we add a 20% weight to B3 and B3 is the week two's data and plus 80% uh, of the D3 
which is the uh, week two's prediction. So then we output the third weeks. And then next, we use the 20% of the previous week's actual data and 80% of that week's predicted data, and so on. So for the first week, I don't have a predicted data, so I just simply use the first week's actual data, 100%. So similarly, we can calculate this matrix for the exponential smoothing method as well. So we're going to have all this. And then those are for um, MAs for the moving average. And this one is for exponential smoothing. For the error, we have um, the actual minus the predicted. And we can copy down the formula. And for the square, we just we take this value and square it and copy the formula. And the percentage equals to the error divided by the original actual data and copy it down. And then for the absolute, we can do that as well. And then we can calculate the average just the same. And so yeah, those are the new ones for the exponential smoothing. And we can see that the MSE for the exponential smoothing is 8.98, which is smaller than the one for moving average. So in this case, the exponential smoothing performs better than the moving average. So overall, measures of forecast accuracy are important factors in comparing different forecasting methods, but we have to be careful not to rely too heavily on them. We need to use good judgment and knowledge about business conditions that may affect the values of the variable to be forecast and consider them carefully when we select the method. Historical forecast accuracy is not the only consideration, especially if the pattern shown by the time series is likely to change in the future.